there's nothing not to love about this. Awesome fun to play and it encourages you to do stupid stuff. If I'm taking plastic off, that's a, that's a good sign that I like it and I'm intending to keep it. Great little guitar. Hi everybody. Thanks for joining us today. So we've got another highly affordable guitar uh, to look at today. Um, let me introduce you to the Squire by Fender FSR Classic Vibe 50s Jazzmaster. What a thing of beauty, hey? Eh? Look at that. So this is the, uh, so FSR first, FSR stands for Fender Special Run didn't know that which I guess means this is a limited edition it comes in two colors this one so this is the sunburst obviously uh, and the other one is uh, white blonde so uh, that's probably pink so beware uh, because the pictures it looks white and I made that mistake once you may have seen that video um, if not, check it out. Yeah, I'll put a link. I'll, I'll put a link up here. Uh, but anyway, so I plumped for the Sunburst one. Uh, I thought it looked cool anyway. But what I didn't, I didn't expect was how cool it looks. It's got this fantastic kind of orange in in the um, in the wood, in the colour, um, which is really attractive. Look at that on the back. I'm sure that the Cameras are picking that up. It's really nice. And when you add to that, these squires have always got this great vintage sort of tint on the on the neck and the skunk stripe, which really, um, you know, really adds up to quite an attractive looking guitar, to be honest with you. It's got this anodized scratch plate and these Telecaster style knurled flat top knobs, which at first I thought that's a little bit unusual and I, and I wasn't really sure about that. But then I did a little bit of research. So this is late 50s. The Jazzmaster, well, obviously this isn't, this is 2021, but it's based on the late 50s uh, Jazzmaster. Jazzmaster was introduced in 1958. So you couldn't get much later than that anyway. And I dug out this picture of the, which I think was the, the first ones. Uh, have a look at this. So you can see that actually this is like a real, there's a real close resemblance to that. It has got this kind of an, anodized aluminium scratch plate and, and these knurled, knurled knobs, same as, same as it did all the way back there. And the black and the black pickup uh, covers. So, uh, yeah, I very quickly um, came around and bonded with this. It's a fabulous looking guitar, really nice. And um, feels nice as well. It's, so it's got a poplar body. Uh, it's got a maple neck. Indian laurel fingerboard, as have, uh, I think, pretty much all affordable guitars now in certainly in the squire and the epiphone range uh and it's got a bone nut it says it's got a bone nut so that's pretty cool i think isn't it um um it's got a nine and a half inch radius fingerboard um it says narrow tall frets you know they're not they're quite you know they're quite chunky and certainly comfortable to play uh, as is the neck. They, again, they call it a slim C profile, but to me, it feels it feels like a medium to me. Um, we'll measure it and we'll put the profile up it, it, and a bit later, and so you can have a look at that for yourselves and judge for yourselves. Um, beyond that, it's got so it's got the classic vintage 
Clusion style metal bottle, metal bottle, metal button tuners. Uh, it's crafted in Indonesia, this one. Um, and um, bottle neck, obviously. Um, so good, and little bushy, bushing style tuners as well. So the old style bushings as opposed to the, you know, the bolt, the, the nuts that tighten them up. Good, none of these lovely fender locking style, uh, post locking style tuners, which are great, really great for string changes once you get the hang of it. Full disclosure, I have played this already. Um, what, what happened was, I came in yesterday morning, um, Saturday. I don't normally do filming on Saturday. Sometimes I do, most of the time I don't. I just muck around, maybe set some cameras up and stuff ready for the next week. I just picked the guitar up because it only arrived you know, late last week. So I picked it up just to have a little strum, tune it up, get a feel of it. And I started, I started playing some stuff uh, and I couldn't stop. So I thought I'd better press record and, in case I come up with something decent. So. Let's have a, a quick listen now at some of the some of the sounds that I came up with and I'll go through the controls in this bit. And then what we'll do is we'll come back and we'll do a little bit of a deeper dive. Um, we'll get into the whole bridge and tremolo setup and the electrics uh, and to just find out a little bit more about what 359 pound buys you these days. OK, so over to me here now or sorry over to me yesterday and we'll be back to me now in a little bit okay cheers <laughs> so three-way switch for these pickups um so this on the middle position It's very, it's clean at the moment. There's no drive. That neck is great. And a bridge. Great. So that's just clean. Um, so I was mucking around with the tone control. It's not great. It doesn't do a great deal. Kind of an on or off thing but of course with this guitar you've got the the dark circuit so this switch here so with the switch down you're on the normal circuit which is the three-way toggle tone and volume and they work uh, let's just try the volume control I mean it works a bit Works a bit. I mean, you wouldn't expect superior pots on a guitar of this price point, I suppose. But it's got this dark circuit. So if you if you literally just switch up to there, I'm pretty sure it engages just the neck pickup, which is then controllable by these two wheel wheelie wheelie controls. Slider, no, not sliders, wheels. Control wheels, volume wheel there, tone wheel there. So this doesn't work when that's in the up position, just this. And it's quite handy, you can use it for a number of things actually. Um, you can use it literally as a kill switch if you want. 
A lot of people do that. Or you can use it. What I like to use it for is um, to try and find that woman tone sweet spot with that. It's not so good on clean, but if you put a bit of drive on this, engage the rat. You've got that there straight away. I'll show you that works. Let's, let's just do something. Do you know what I mean? So it's a cool little... Well, to go one extreme to the other. I haven't, I haven't touched this guitar uh, at all. This is straight out of the box as it comes. No messing around. So I haven't obviously touched the, um, I haven't touched the tremolo yet. So let's, uh, well that wasn't even full up then either. So let's uh, see what happens if we engage the whammy. I, I haven't done it yet because I rarely, if ever use one. So this floating bridge obviously sits in the middle. And um, let's try a little bit with a bit of something there. So obviously I'm filming this out of order, so I don't know how much of that playing bit I've included just before you come to this bit yet. Uh, but I'm going to try and include some of the bit where I was using the whammy bar um, to show you. And, and if I haven't left much in, then you'll see it in the play out.
The play out is a continuation of what I was just doing. I just carried on. I carried on playing for about an hour and had a real proper wig out and really thoroughly enjoyed playing this thing. Um, it was great. Um, but I used the whammy bar quite a lot. Um, and uh, I was really surprised at how stable the tuning was. It, it, it stayed in tune, basically, which I was amazed at. Um, I'll tell you why. I'm mean, this, um, I've bought, I've got, I've got a, a separate one here to show you. But this is the style of, of, of tremolo. They, they put on the Squire um, Jazz Masters and Jaguars. And it's not a locking one. Like if you, um, and I'll show you what I mean because I've got a, a, I have got a Jazz Master that I'll show you. So this, this is a Jazz Master that I've had for a while. It's a mid nineties made in Japan one. It's a very cool thing. It's very dusty. Shows you how much I play it, doesn't it? Um, not because I don't want to, because it's a fantastic guitar, but because I've got too many guitars basically. But this has got the locking, this has got two, you'll notice a little bit of difference on this actually. But first of all, it's got this little knob here, which is a locking bit. So it's got a locking tremolo. You can lock it in place so that it'll only go one way. So the, 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 the tension of the strings will pull it and it won't move any further. I and mean, you can bend it up by bending it up still. And that's kind of designed, I think, so that if you, if you break a string, it won't suddenly throw out everything out of whack. But I mean, it's really useful because it, it, it does kind of give it that proper stability at all times. You know, it effectively turns it into a locked system. It is a locked system. Whereas the Squire doesn't have that. Um, so you've constantly got um, movement. I'm going to try and show the movement because I've, I've got this. This is actually one that I took off of a Squire. Jazz Master that I had a few years ago, and I upgraded it to a locking one, which I got on eBay, um, as, as along with a few other bits and pieces. Um, so I happen to have this on hand to to show you what it is like underneath. All it is is kind of a spring affair. I'm not even in the shot, am I? I've got to go further. Let me go to further over to this camera. It's got this, this spring affair. So um, obviously when you, when you wiggle that, presses against that spring. And what I've discovered is you can tighten that spring up and increase the tension, which is handy to know, because I didn't know that myself, to be honest with you. So if you've got one and it isn't playing ball, you know, that screw there, this screw here, that tightens it up. Give it a little bit more, you know, drag or to suit your, you know, your feel or whatever. So that's that. That's a little bit of um, nerdy information for you there. Uh, and the other thing about this hardware here, the, the bridge, this bridge here is the Mustang style bridge, which was a popular upgrade. The original bridges on Jazz Masters and Jaguars are a little bit more flimsy. They haven't got the slots are not, not as deep as this, and the strings tend to pop out all the time. Uh, another popular mod and fix for that, again, you've, you've already seen that on here, is this thing here. That's a buzz stop. They call it a buzz stop. What it does is it, it increases the brake angle on the strings to stop, oh, to help prevent the, them popping out. This one here has got a mastery bridge on it, which is an upgrade on the upgrade. So a mastery bridge, if you're not familiar, you should check them out. They're very expensive, a couple hundred quid in the UK anyway, because they, they, they're made in the States. The difference with the mastery bridge is it's adjustable in all sorts of different ways. And they also stop it rocking, but the posts are, you know, fixed in there, so it doesn't move. But obviously the saddles are sufficiently slick, if you like, not lubricated, they're not lubricated, but they're, they're slidey enough to, to not need it, you know, 
to to that the strings will just glide over it when you when you whammy. So um, yeah, this old thing has got you know locking, buzz stop, mastery bridge, belt and braces, you know, and it's very cool. Um, so having said all that, these they're, they're mods that you could do if you wanted to. But as I as I um, as I said, this was playable straight out of the box. I didn't have any issues with it at all. Uh, it stayed in tune. Um, and I know that, you know, some people also, I think there's a couple of videos on YouTube showing you how to, you know, if, if this moving backwards and forward does become a problem, you can, you can kind of just wrap tape around the posts, um, the, the, you know, the posts to, to make them tight in the, in the holes there. And, um, you know, and improve stability a little bit more. Uh, another thing I will mention as well that the, so the, this is adjustable by, um, oh yeah, an Allen key that they don't include with the guitar. They include the, the truss rod one, the normal, the there. But what they don't include is one to adjust these. It's a little Allen key. And uh, now I'm, it's in, it's very loose basically to raise and lower the bridge you just you know sorry i can't tell you what size it is i just had to to fish around in my little collection until i found one that fitted um but what you what you find is that this kind of works its way down um because these are quite loose so the vibration of playing you'll play it for a while and then i mean a while i don't know days you know but eventually, depends how, how much you're getting into, I suppose. But eventually, you'll suddenly notice that the strings have started buzzing and the action's ridiculously low. It's because it's worked its way down. So um, another top tip is you get a little bit of um, thread lock. And um, when you take the strings off, just you know put a bit of thread lock to stop, to stop them moving. And then, obviously, if you need to adjust it, you can you know, bust it by just tightening it and... Do it again so that'll um you know that'll give you i mean if you're gigging you don't want to suddenly have um have to stop because the strings are buzzing out all over the place and it, it definitely can happen so we've gone through switching we've gone through the hardware let's take strings off let's just have a look under the hood and, and see what's going on okay so obviously Taking these strings off now has completely released the um, the pressure on on the old tremolo. So it'll be interesting to see how easy it is to to to, to get that back when we put a new set on. I suppose, won't it? And the frets look. Um, Look decent enough. There's nothing. There's nothing sticking out. And I didn't have any. Um, I didn't have any problems. Actually, looks like. Um, looks like the edge of the fingerboard's been rolled a little bit. I'll try and take some B-roll of that so you can see what I mean. It's. quite nice so I've got a bit of plastic on there I might as well take that off while I'm at it I'm taking plastic off that's a that's a good sign that I like it and I'm intending to keep it it doesn't always work out like that because quite often I might trade it for something else or change my mind but um, for now Oh, let's just weigh it before we uh, before we go any further. Seven pound fifteen ounces. Nice. Or three point six zero kilos. Good. Nice. Nice. Nice weight. Whoops. My bridge has just fallen off. 
So this is, um, so whilst it's fallen off, I might as well just show you the, the bridge I was talking about, you see. So these are the posts and obviously they fit in the, they fit in the holes there, but it's, um, it's quite loose, it, it, it flips back and forward, so a lot of people they'll wrap a bit of tape around those so that it's a snug fit. And these are the um, screws, see it's gone on, they're on a, so it's a little pivot on the, the end, you see. It, you know, I mean, it's a, it's an interesting design, and I'm sure that it can work perfectly well if it's set up properly. But a lot of people prefer to change it for something that works more reliably, I think. So, we'll just pop that down there for a minute out of the way um, while we measure the pickups on the bridge, eleven point eight six. And on the neck, 6.49. So there's a big variation between those, isn't there? So these are Fender Design pickups. They're Alnico um, single coil. And they're, they're in a complete place of their own. They're not P90s. They're not Telecaster, Stratocaster single coil pickups. And they're not humbuckers. They're a, an individual pickup that was... Jazzmaster pickup really it does find its way into other things from time to time it's a really nice um, unique sound of its own which hopefully you heard in the bit that you've just watched that I haven't edited yet um, so you know I think we covered that I hope let's do the next measurements Here's the profile and measurements at the uh, first fret. And here's the profile and measurements at the 12th fret. We've got some wonky screws in this pit guard here. So let's get the wonky screws out and, uh, and have a look and see what they're hiding. It's a shame that they go in, you know, uh, like this because they'll forever be wonky. Those two there hold the switch in place, so don't don't undo them or those two because they hold the, those in place. Obviously, removing all these screws is a mammoth task, but it's a lot easier to get to the wiring than it is on, say, a three three five. Okay, let's lift it up. So, oh, that's um, so. Well, a lot of wiring. So the pickups stay in place. And um, I just can't, can't flip that completely. I'll have to hold that. So I can't move it. But what I hope you can see is that the, these screws screw the pickups directly to the body. So it can be screwed in tighter or loosened to adjust the height of the pickups, but a fairly um, rudimentary <laughs> adjustment system, really. Yeah. How far do you want to screw them into the wood, basically? And here's the inside. It's got these tiny little mini pots with an A on the back. So they're anarchist pots, apparently. Made in Korea, it say. Tiny little tings, little bit of shielding there, and this is the um, and again, these you can see that I think you know, pots these pots there, they're the same, they're the same pots, they're just fixed on this bracket sideways, and you know, you've got the these wheels there to adjust the tone and volume. Um, and uh, it looks like a switchcraft, actually. If it is or not, I don't know, but it does look like a switchcraft switch. It feels good, so maybe it is. 
I don't know. The sound was fine. I mean, there's nothing. I'm going to put this back. It's got lots of obviously decent paint shielding there. Um, uh, there's nothing else to see. I'm not going to undo the pickups. There's nothing really to see there. So let's just pop this all back in place. So if you wanted to upgrade the wiring in this, um, the most straightforward thing to do would be to buy a loaded pick guard. And as long as you make sure you get one for a squire, there are plenty of, of available um, where you might want to improve the quality of the wiring and maybe the maybe the pickups. So let's put the pick guard back on. Let's put a new set of strings on, and then I'll um, I'll see you again when I'm when we find out what how that's affected the uh, tremolo and how simple it is. There you go, easy. There was no problem at all. So let's sum up. We have discovered another brilliant, affordable guitar from Squire by Fender. This 50s Jazz Master is great fun. It sounds great. It's awesome fun to play. And it, and it encourages you to do stupid stuff, as you'll see in a minute. You know, with, with the whammy bar and with the huge amount of real estate behind the bridge that so many people, you know, likes of Sonic Youth and, you know, people like that have used to great effect. It's a proper... It was designed for jazz musicians and it, and it ended up as being, you know, the top... One of the top grunge guitars of all time, really, because it's... I mean, it... It found a home in surf music of the 60s, unexpectedly, apparently, um, because it's got such a distinctive, airy sound. It looks massive, incidentally. It's not. It's just the same scale length as a Stratocaster and a Telecaster, 25 and a half inch scale length. Um, so, and this offset is such a comfortable, such a comfortable design, such a comfortable guitar. You know, we've obviously got the belly carve and it's such a comfortable guitar to play standing up or sitting down. It's light. Uh, and there's nothing not to love about this. Um, the basis of the guitar is great. This, you know, it's... Well, I, I mean, I've all the playing is straight out of the box. <laughs> no setup at all. Don't touch the action. I haven't touched it. I hadn't touched the strings at that point. That was the strings that it came with. Um, and these are a new set of strings on it now. Um, and it's tuned up fine and uh, it's ready to go. Um, I think if you were going to keep it, um, you might want to, you might want to change the wiring because it, it will probably prove a little bit flimsy. I mean, I'm making an assumption then, but what we might do that anyway, we might use this as a project guitar and, um, you know, maybe pop some more wiring in it um, and explore what's available for something like this. Um, because, again, it, it, the price-wise, it's, you know, so far um, below the cost of a, an American version of this. I didn't even look to see what American version of this costs, but, you know, it's going to be 1,500 quid or more probably now, isn't it? I don't know. I, I, you know, maybe I'll put a little grab up on the screen so that we, we know. Um, but it's um, great little guitar. Okay, I think that's, I think that's pretty much covered everything, isn't it? So, great guitar, lovely new affordable guitar added to our little collection here. We'll hang on to this. Um, we may try it out again and muck around with the wiring in the future, maybe. Maybe not. Who knows? I never know from one week to the next, to be honest with you, what I'm going to do. So um, I, like to, I like to keep myself guessing. Um, for now, let's join me 
are back in my Saturday morning wig out and um, see what I got up to, shall we? Thanks a lot. See you again next week, I hope. Cheers. Bye. isn't it really? 